Wow, Singapore is opening many more vaccinated travel lanes, VTLs, to allow fully vaccinated travelers from the VTL countries to enter Singapore quarantine free or for Singapore residents to travel outside of Singapore and return quarantine free from one of those VTL countries. About one and a half months ago, I already uploaded a video on the VTL process and requirements to enter Singapore quarantine free. More than 12,000 of you have already watched that video and if you have not done so, please go watch it because it includes the most basic information for the VTL travel, which is necessary to understand as a first step. So why am I doing a VTL 2.0 update video today? Well, I actually wanted to do another food video, which is much more enjoyable to watch and maybe also to do. But I see that there are so many people still asking me many questions about the VTL and that means that despite the available information online on the VTL, a lot of people probably just wanna double confirm their understanding or have not yet checked out the Q&A section of the Singapore Safe Travel ICA website. Go check it out, they have answered a lot of questions, I would say most of them. I will copy the link in the video description below. So this video is made for those who seriously consider traveling to Singapore at the moment and of course for those Singapore residents who really want a holiday in one of those VTL countries. Many of us still have some question marks, um, which I think is very normal because there's a ton of information to digest and understand. I really hope that this video will help at least some of you, especially those who are wondering exactly about the questions that we're gonna cover. Of course, if you still have questions after this video and after checking out the ICA Q&A section, please feel free to leave the questions in the comment sections below. So finally coming to the topic, what are we gonna cover today? We will focus on only four very frequently asked questions, FAQs, which are the following. Updated VTL countries as of today, three main differences that I found compared to the information that I provided in my previous VTL video, VTL related costs, VTL traveling with kids, and also, do you need to book a VTL flight flying out of Singapore, which I will cover under the section one-way versus two-way VTL. So let's jump right into question number one. So this is the currently updated list of VTL countries. Only two and a half months ago, the VTL pilot schemes with Germany and Brunei started. Now we have already more than 10 active countries and by the end of the year, we will have more than 20 active VTL countries. Coming to the differences compared to my previous video. If you have watched my previous video on the required documents and the process, you will see that the process is pretty much the same and there are only very minor differences. One difference is that you can apply for the VTP much earlier in advance for better planning. Secondly, you can take an ART test instead of only a PCR test pre-departure. ART tests are much cheaper than PCR tests, so you can save some money now. The on-arrival PCR test at Changi Airport now only costs 125 Singapore dollars, which is much cheaper than the previous price tag of 160 Singapore dollars. I believe that a lot of people are interested in the implicated VTL related travel costs. First, I will show you a general overview of all the costs that you probably have to consider. And secondly, I will show you the VTL specific costs, which are related to the required COVID tests pre-departure and on arrival. So without further delay, here is question number two. Of course, everyone has to consider their own flight ticket. It's variable. The VTL specific costs are the required pre-departure and on arrival tests. Think about the self-isolation accommodation. For short-term travelers, do not forget to purchase the required insurance coming to Singapore and also get the visa that you need to enter Singapore, if required. Here are two examples of different costs traveling to Singapore and out. Example number one, traveling from Malaysia and back. So when you travel from Malaysia to Singapore, you will need to do a pre-departure ART test in Malaysia. I was looking at Sunway Medical as a reference to see that the price of an ART test is approximately 138 Malaysian Ringgit. Reaching Singapore on arrival, the PCR test, as I said, costs 125 Singapore dollars. When traveling back from Singapore to Malaysia, the pre-departure test must be a PCR test at the moment and this costs you approximately 107 Singapore dollars. On arrival at KLIA Airport in Malaysia, Malaysians will need to pay 250 Malaysian Ringgit, whereas non-Malaysians will have to pay 350 Malaysian Ringgit for the on-arrival PCR test. You can see that the total for only COVID tests for this trip will cost you approximately 360 to 390 Singapore dollars. 
Let's look at another example, traveling from the US to Singapore and back. The first thing you have to do is a pre-departure ART test in the US. I found one which is approximately 130 US dollars. On arrival at Changi Airport, you definitely need to do another PCR test costing you 125 Singapore dollars. Traveling back from Singapore, you only need to do a pre-departure ART test for example, which costs you only around $30 in Singapore. Total will be for the US travels approximately 335 Singapore dollars. Please keep in mind that these are only exemplary costs from certain clinics. Of course, you can use different ones. The purpose is to give you a rough example of why it is important to research exactly what kind of tests you need to do to enter which country. I also received the question on the VTL traveling with kids. I did not travel with a kid, so I do not have any personal experience, but I did some research and this is what I found online. Here goes question number three. So unvaccinated children aged 12 and below may enter Singapore on the VTL. What the special is that they do not need to apply for a VTP, a vaccinated travel pass. What is a mandatory requirement is that they must be, however, accompanied by a fully vaccinated VTL traveler and they need to comply with all other VTL conditions. This means that the VTL conditions such as traveling to Singapore only on a designated VTL flight, having a certain travel history in the past 14 days, for short-term travelers, uh, required insurance and separate visa to enter Singapore, etc. are applicable for children as well. All travelers except for those aged 2 and below must undergo a PCR or ART test pre-departure within two days before entering Singapore. Children aged 2 and below do not need to undergo an on-arrival PCR test. Other differences on the Trace Together app requirements for children are also mentioned on this list. Children aged 6 and below which are exempted from this requirement. These are the only differences that I found traveling with kids on the VTL. So in my previous video, I only talked about the required documents and process to travel quarantine-free into Singapore. I do not cover any information about traveling out of Singapore into the other destination country quarantine-free. So I come now to the question that I received, do I need to book a VTL flight flying out of Singapore? The answer is, it depends. Let's take a look at our final question for today, question number four. Here I want to highlight and show an example why you must always do your proper research about the entry requirements into the other destination country which is not Singapore because we all know that when flying to Singapore on the VTL we need to fly on designated VTL flights but flying out of Singapore it might not have to be. Here you can see the two examples of requirements to travel from Singapore to Malaysia or from Singapore to the US. If you want to enter Malaysia quarantine free you will need to have a certain travel history of the past 14 days as well, be fully vaccinated, have a negative PCR test pre-departure, fly to Malaysia only on designated VTL flights just as flying into Singapore on only designated VTL flights, download the Trace app, apply for the visa, purchase an additional COVID-related insurance, take an on-arrival PCR test at the airport. However, in order to travel from Singapore to the US, you will need to be fully vaccinated, have a negative test and apply of course for a visa if required to enter the US. You will not be required to fly on a designated VTL flight from Singapore to the US. This of course is information as of today. That's it for today. The information in this video is my personal understanding of the available public information on the VTLs which are very dynamic and continuously evolve due to the nature of the COVID situation. So make sure to do your own research and check out the official authorities' websites. For Singapore, it would be Singapore Safe Travel ICA website. I will copy the important links for Singapore in the description below. In case you missed it, there's also a contact form which you can send to the ICA website and then you will receive official answers to any remaining VTL questions that you might have. That link is also down there. I really hope that this video helped at least some of you and if you did like the video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. In the next weeks I will be doing a lot of more food videos in Singapore and I hope you can enjoy those too so go check it out. Until next time.